Texans are winning the Super Bowl this year with Davis Mills. It's Davis Mills time, baby. Let's go. Touchdown. Hello folks, today I'll be doing my 2021-2022 AFC prediction video and how I'll be conducting this is by going through each AFC division and break it down of going through each team of how they're going to perform in the season and if they're going to make it to the playoffs. After I go through each division and who wins the division, I will pick my wildcard winners and then we'll go right to the AFC playoffs. The next video I will be doing is the NFC side, so stay tuned for that. You'll see who my Super Bowl winner is going to be in the next video, not this video. I'm going to go for the AFC side. Next, we're going to go through NFC. Now, let's start in the AFC East. So, starting in fifth place, I have is the New York Jets finishing at 5-12 and 12 this year. The last time the Jets were good was when Joe Namath won a Super Bowl. We're going to win the game, I guarantee it. So, now, taking a look at the Jets' schedule, you have the Ravens, Browns, Bengals, Steelers, Dolphins, Packers, Broncos, Patriots, Bills, Patriots, Bears, Vikings, Bills, Lions, Jaguars, Seahawks, Dolphins. And so I think when looking at their schedule, there are definitely going to be some tough games for them. The Jets are a very young team. This offense, yes, has great weapons. You got Carter, Davis, Moore. The offense line is getting better because they were rebuilding it. Zach Wilson has to develop. So the offense is slowly getting together. They're figuring out. And this season will help determine if Zach Wilson is the guy or if he's not. And then you look on their defense, they have to be careful. Especially going up against great wide receivers in their division. So that defense has to be ready for them. I don't think they will. They're a very young secondary and they're going to get killed in this season. Slowly develop. This is what the Jets are about. They're slowly developing. I don't think they're contenders quite yet. Next year, I definitely can see them be a sneaky team. Once again, it's just Zach Wilson. Can he develop? But for right now, I have to put the Jets here at 5. And in third place is the New England Patriots at 9-8. and eight. The Patriots did good last year. Mac Jones was solid last year. The defense was very good. I don't think the Patriots are going to put up the same results from last year. I think Mac Jones needs to develop more. The run game I really liked. They lost J.C. Jackson, their best CB. So this offense, it has to get better despite having over 27 points per game. It needs to get better. It's not going to hold that up. Yes, you had the run game with Damien Harris, but Mac Jones has to develop, as I mentioned before, no receivers. They really have no receivers, and they got to do a lot better than that. This offense has got to get it going. They lost Josh McDaniels to the Raiders. The question to me for the Patriots is, is Mac Jones the guy? And I think he can be that QB system kind of guy. And if Bill Belichick uses him well, they should be good. And look into the Patriots' schedule. You got the Dolphins, Pittsburgh, Baltimore, Green Bay, Detroit, Cleveland, Chicago, New York, Colts, Jets, Vikings, Buffalo, Cardinals, Raiders, Bengals, Dolphins, and Bills. So when I'm looking at their schedule here, you got the Bills, Dolph to split with. You have to worry about the Bengals, Raiders, Cardinals, Vikings, Colts, the Ravens, Packers, and the Browns. So there's a lot of games I see here that could be hard for the Patriots because they have hard schedules here. And I think that's going to hurt them a bit. I Patriots are going to get a little worse and not make the postseason. I don't think they're going to make it there. So I have the Patriots finishing at 9-8. I don't think they're that team. They need to develop more. Heading into second place of the AFC East is the Miami Dolphins at 10-7. and seven. The biggest thing that happened to the Dolphins this offseason was acquiring Tyree Kill. This offense is going to look very good. And you have a new head coach coming in, Mike McDaniel, who was the offense coordinator for the 49ers. He served under Kyle Shanahan, that 49ers offense. So they're going to have a 49ers kind of offense, which they got multiple running backs. Tyree Kills, I just mentioned, they got Jalen Waddle, Mike Gusecki. So this offense is going to be loaded. The defense, it was solid last year. It was pretty good. And the question to me is Tua. Is he the guy for the Dolphins? Is he? And you see this throw from Tua to Tyreek Hill. It's just his arm is my question. Can Tua be the guy is really the question to me. I don't know. When I've watched him, I haven't seen him been the guy. But this is, I think, a make or break it for him this year. He does well, he gets to keep his job. If he doesn't, he might be leaving. But I think he's going to do well with his offense with a new head coach coming in. He gets a familiar with better offense with Hill and Waddle and Gasecki and the running backs. I really like this Dolphins team. I really do. 
when looking at their schedule here, they got New England, Baltimore, Buffalo, Cincinnati, Jets, Vikings, Steelers, Lions, Bears, Cleveland, Texans, 49ers, Chargers, Bills, Packers, Patriots, and finish off the Jets. So this schedule is not terrible, but there are a couple games I see them losing, which can hurt them for a playoff spot. And I really think this Dolphins team is going to fight for a playoff spot. I think like they're wild card contenders. And I don't think Dolphins are there quite yet because of Tua. Once he gets the relationship with the offense, once he gets it going, Dolphins are going to playoffs. I don't trust Tua right now. Until I see him do a lot better, that's when I think the Dolphins go to playoffs. So I think the Dolphins are going to do solid, but just miss out in the playoffs. I think that's going to happen for them. So I have the Dolphins going at 10-7. and 7. And then taking on the crown in the AFC East is the Buffalo Bills at 12 and 5. I have going. Coin toss is Josh Allen's biggest fear, as Patrick Mahomes mentioned. Josh Josh's biggest fear. Vegetables. A coin toss. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good answer. So Bills, to me, they're a great team. I love watching Josh Allen. They've been close the past two years. But Patrick Mahomes has beat him twice. And you saw last year's playoff game with Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen. 13 seconds. I cannot believe this. Get how this Bills defense allowed that to happen in the playoffs when you're about to win. 13 seconds. Hail Mary kicks. Got to throw it right away right now to someone in the middle. Down the middle. Oh, my goodness. It's going to be a 48-yard attempt. Only 48 yards. That's what it'll be. I just when Kelsey moved... It's going to be 49 yards is what it is. 49 yards to send it to overtime. Harrison Butker. I'm so nervous. So uh, hundreds of thousands around the planet. The kick is good. It's going to overtime. Maybe ever. I mean, this is unbelievable back and forth. Big plays, smart plays. Looking to the end zone for the win. He caught it. Ball game. Chiefs to the championship game. Bills have had a history of choking. You can go look in the 90s. Went with Jim Kelly. Four straight Super Bowls. And lost not one, not two. But all four, they lost in the Super Bowl. They've never won a Super Bowl, and that's been the shame for the Bills in their of their history. They've never won a Super Bowl, and they've been so close many times. But the Bills need to get over the hump. That's the the question for the Bills is to get over the hump. They are expected to win this division. I have them winning here. But the good thing they did this offseason was get Von Miller, a former Super Bowl MVP, and won a Super Bowl. You bring in Roger Saffold, a great offensive lineman. You sign Taylor Gabriel, who replaces Cole Beasley right there. And you get O.J. Howard for tight end. So Josh Allen's getting more help on the offense. He got a leader on the defense. The defense is the biggest question to me. They had one of the best defenses last year. But they have got to close out the game. That's my biggest concern for the Bills. But looking at the Bills' schedule here, you got the Los Angeles Rams, Tennessee Titans, Miami Dolphins, Baltimore Ravens, Steelers, Chiefs, Packers, Jets, Vikings, Browns, Lions, Patriots, Jets, Dolphins, Bears, Bengals, and Patriots. So the Bills do not have a hard schedule. The games I see that could mess up for them are the Packers, Chiefs, Baltimore maybe, Rams, but not to know any Bills fans out there if you're watching here, but you don't want that Stefan Diggs photo again. You don't want that playoff loss. You don't. You want to win the Super Bowl, right? So just get over the hump. Like my team, for example, we need to get over the hump. You guys need to get over the hump. Everyone needs to get over the hump. Beat Patrick Mahomes in the playoffs. When you beat Patrick Mahomes in the playoffs, you are definitely going to the Super Bowl. Bills, I have them once again going at 12-5, and, and I think they are easily win this AFC East division. So to recap the AFC East division real quick, I have Jets finishing in fourth, Patriots third, Dolphins second, and the Bills winning the division first. So I have that as my rankings for the AFC East. Now let's move on to the AFC North. In fourth place, I have Pittsburgh Steelers at 6 and 11 here. The Steelers lost Big Ben, but Big Ben wasn't great. He did take the Steelers to the playoffs, but he got blown out by the Chiefs in the first round. And they were lucky to get in because of the field goal by the Raiders in the last regular season game. So the Steelers, to me, I don't like them really much because of the quarterback situation. Mitchell Trubisky you have and Kenny Pickett. Now, both those guys 
to be solid for you. When you're looking at your rest of the division, they got better talent than the Steelers. Now, that's nothing against the Steelers, but that's the reality they have to face. They're not better than all those teams. So the Steelers are going to have a tough time going up against these teams. So Steelers, once again, you have Trubisky and Pickett. Pickett, I like more. Trubisky is just going to be the starter for this year, and that might be it for him. And then Kenny Pickett rolls in, or maybe during the season, to learn under and get better and develop more. So the Steelers, I don't think they're contenders. Best I could say is wild card. I really don't see much of a threat this year. I really don't. But the good thing that happened for the Steelers, they have Deontay Johnson still, their best receiver. Nigel Harris was amazing, despite having a bad offensive line. They replaced Juju Smith-Schuster with George Pickens. Going on to the defensive side, there needs to be improvement a little bit. They have the great pass rush, TJ Watt, defensive player of the year last year. Amazing. They need to do a little bit better on the defensive line. And the cornerbacks question me a bit. I don't like coverage, and that hurt the Steelers a little bit last year. I need to see a little bit better of that. The defense is still good. It's still good, but there needs to be a little minor uh, improvements, I'm going to say, for that defense. The offense, on the other hand, fix that offensive line. Just fix it, please. Big Ben got sacked a lot. Nigel Harris couldn't go anywhere, really, because of that. Once the Steelers get a solid offensive line, you're going to have a great run game. Once you have the QB and the offensive line figured out, see the Steelers doing well. But for right now, I have no idea what the QB situation is going to be because it's most likely to be Trubisky, but we have to see how he does because he hasn't played since the Chicago Bears, even though he was on the Bills last year. But the Steelers, looking at the schedule real quick, you got... Bengals, Patriots, Browns, Jets, Bills, Buccaneers, Dolphins, Eagles, Saints, Bengals again, Colts, Falcons, Ravens, Panthers, Raiders, Ravens, Browns. The Steelers have one of the toughest schedules this year. And this is where I think the Steelers are not going to be great this year because of the schedule given and how many playoff teams you're going up against and great teams. That's why I put the Steelers at 6-11 because of how difficult the schedule is going to be. Is Kenny Pickett or Trubisky the guy? That's why I wonder for the Steelers. When they figure out the QB, the Steelers are going to do better. So for right now, I got the Steelers finishing at 4. So Steelers fans, you can wave your terrible towel because of how bad you're going to be this year. Finishing in third place the AFC North is Cleveland Browns at 10 and 7. They made a huge trade for Sean Watson this past offseason for three first round picks. From that, you see the Browns are trying to win and they're in that win mode because they are upset about Baker Mayfield was not the guy. So the question for the Browns is, how's the QB situation going to go of how you deal with Baker Mayfield? And we don't know if Deshaun Watson's playing. We don't honestly know because of the lawsuits and suspension. We have no idea. So we have to wait and see how that's going to come. But looking at this Browns offense... They traded for Amari Cooper this past offseason for a fifth round pick. You still got David Njoku, who signed a franchise tag. Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt, one of the best running back duos. Deshaun Watson plays like how he did two seasons ago. And the Browns are win that division easily. Deshaun Watson is going to help the Browns offense a lot. Running throughout the pocket, he's got plenty of time. He's got loaded weapons. This is a great offense when I look at it. And the offensive line is great. They only lost J.C. Treader, their center. So the offense can do pretty well. Looking on the defense side, they paid Denzel Ward to be the highest paid CB in the league for a hot second until my boy Jair Alexander took over that. But Denzel Ward, he definitely deserved it. And he's one of the best CBs in the league. And that's secondary for the Browns. I really like the defensive line, that's my main concern for the Browns defense because, one, they were okay with the run defense. Pass rush was amazing with Miles Garrett. They re-signed Clowney. The defensive line and the tackling, that's my worry for the Browns defense because the tackling was all right. The run defense, I like to see a better job. Of. That's the main issue on the defense. But looking into the Browns schedule, you have Panthers, Jets, Steelers, Falcons, Chargers, Patriots, Ravens, Bengals, Dolphins, Bills, Buccaneers, Texans, Bengals, Ravens, Saints, Commanders, Steelers. So there are tough games for the Browns with Ravens. I think they'll split. Bengals, I also think they'll split. Buccaneers, Buffalo, I think are be very tough for them. Miami could be a sneaky team. All depends on two, as I mentioned before. Then you got the Chargers. So this is not a terrible schedule for the Browns. I think this is an easy schedule for them to get into the playoffs. Question for this entire team, as I mentioned before, is the QB situation. When is Deshaun Watson playing? He's already practicing for the Browns. But how much is he going to get suspended? What is Baker Mayfield doing? Are they keeping him? Are they trading him? And the first seven weeks are going to be trouble. If you're not going to have Baker Mayfield, who's upset, and Deshaun Watson suspended, how are those weeks going to go for the Browns? Coming in second place of the AFC North is the Cincinnati Bengals at 11-6. Bengals, they went to the Super Bowl last year. They lost. 
However, I think there was a little bit of luck involved for this team of being one of the worst to the best, but they did pretty well overall. Great weapons. So you got Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, Joe Mixon. This offense can do pretty well. And going on to the defensive side, the secondary was the biggest problem for me. When you watch that Super Bowl, the Bengals versus Rams, the secondary do terrible, not be on coverage, be off like 10 yards, not making the tackles, missing opportunities. The CBs are the real trouble for this team. Do not have Eli Apple being the CB again. Please do not. He was terrible. Question to me is, is Jesse Bates playing because of the franchise tag and might have a holdout this season? I don't know. They got to address that. So the CBs are the biggest positional need for them right now. They address offensive lines as long as Joe Burrow is healthy. But looking into the Bengals schedule here, you have the Steelers, Cowboys, Jets, Dolphins, Ravens, Saints, Falcons, Browns, Panthers, Steelers, Titans, Chiefs, Browns, Buccaneers, Patriots, Bills, Ravens. I think this is a tough schedule for them, especially down the stretch after bye week because it doesn't get easy because you got Kansas City, Cleveland, Cleveland, Bucks, Buffalo, and Baltimore. That's a very hard schedule for them. So that's why I have them finishing at 11 and 6 because of how difficult that schedule is going to be. And it might come down to that last week against Baltimore to decipher the division. This team is going to do great. Offense is going to be top 10. The defense, get the CBs. You got to address the CBs. Just extend Jesse Bates to lock them up. Get it addressed. And again, don't let Joe Burrow get sacked like six to eight times a game. Please do not let that happen, Bank. Do address the offensive line. So I'm finishing at second place in the AFC North. Taking home the crown in the AFC North is the Baltimore Ravens. Ravens, I have them going 11 and 6 here. I think they'll do pretty well with Lamar Jackson coming off his injury. And to let you know, folks, I got this hat by just working for the Ravens. Foot right here of me working for the Ravens. It's one of my previous videos. You can go check that out. My experience with the Baltimore Ravens. Back to the Ravens. Lamar Jackson's coming off the injury. I think he'll have his revenge tour. I think he will. Injuries hurt this team last year. Everyone was hurt on both sides of the ball. Looking at the offense now, they have no weapons really. Besides the running backs, Mark Andrews, Rashad Bateman, and that's it. And they trade Hollywood Brown for a first round pick. And with that pick, they draft an offensive lineman. The key for the Ravens offense is, is the offensive line. Because all the Ravens can do is run the ball with Lamar Jackson. He's not a heavy passer. Most of the time, he'll just run the ball. He will throw it sometimes. He will run the ball, and this will hurt him. So the offensive line has to help Lamar Jackson. That is the main weapon for the Ravens offense, is the offensive line. If it's not good or not healthy, then the Ravens offense is going to be terrible. Lamar does have Mark Andrews, and the Ravens did lock him up with a huge extension last year, so that was great. Ravens offense, it's not top 10. It can be a solid offense. They got to develop more weapons than just running the ball. They got to do that. And then going on to the defensive side of the ball, you signed Marcus Williams, you drafted Kyle Hamilton, and then you got the CBs with Marcus Peters and Humphrey. That's going to be a great secondary. And my concern for the defense is the pass rush. They didn't have a great pass rush last season. And that's one of the weaknesses I saw in this Ravens team. Now they're explosive. They can get up to the QB's face, but they didn't have a lot of sacks. The pass rush has to get better because the secondary is going to be covering the guys a whole lot of time. And they have to get after the QB and sack him and bring him down instead of letting him scramble for 10 yards straight. I've got to do a better job of that. My biggest concern for the Ravens is... Will Lamar Jackson stay healthy? I think this team's going to do pretty well. And looking into the schedule, you have the Jets, Dolphins, Patriots, Bills, Bengals, Giants, Browns, Buccaneers, Saints, Panthers, Jaguars, Broncos, Steelers, Browns, Falcons, Steelers, Bengals. I think this is an all right schedule for the Ravens, but there are some games outside the divisional rivals that concern me to the Ravens. The Buccaneers, the Bills, but they got to take care of business. If they don't take care of business, you go home. So the Ravens have to take care of business in the divisional rival, which I see them definitely doing. Most likely going to split with the Browns and Bengals. The Ravens, I think this is going to be a great team. But folks, just to recap the AFC North real quick, I have the Steelers finishing at four, Browns at three, Bengals at two. And the Ravens have won. Now we get to the AFC South. In fourth place, I have the Houston Texans finishing at 4-13. and 
Davis Mills. Is he the QB for the Texans, maybe? This is his chance. Can he be the franchise guy? Maybe. He wasn't that bad last year. But Houston will be bad for a while. All sides of the ball are bad. The offensive line I like. They still have some good offensive weapons. Brandon Cooks, running backs. The biggest move for this team was trained to Sean Watson, their franchise guy, because they didn't want to deal with the lawsuits for three first round picks. So the Texans are rebuilding. They address some of their needs by drafting Kenyon Green, the offensive lineman, Derek Stingley. So... This team, despite drafting help on the defense, the offensive line is going to do very good. On the defensive side of the ball, they need help all over. Yes, they drafted Derek Stanley, but they need help everywhere. Pass rush, defensive linemen, linebackers, secondary. They need help everywhere. Texans defense is a huge major issue to me. And the Texans offense, it's not great. Looking into their schedule, it's terrible. It's just terrible. I'm not going to list through it. It's just... So any Houston Texans fans out there, it's going to be a while for the Texans to be good again. It's going to be a while. So so I got the Houston Texans finishing at 4-13. and 13. In third place is the Jacksonville Jaguars at 8-9. and nine. There are some games when I look at this Jaguars schedule that they could upset some teams. Now, I do think they're not going to be great, but I do think they could be kind of a sleeper team. When you looked at what they did in the offseason, they improved. They spend a lot of money in the free agency on mid-tier guys that fired Urban Meyer. Remember that dude who went to Ohio? Yeah, that wasn't great when you look at him. The only good thing that happened for the Jaguars last year was not let the Colts get in the playoffs. You remember with the Clowns last year? They have a new head coach, which is Doug Peterson, the former Philadelphia Eagles head coach who won the Super Bowl for them. This team improved. I don't think they're a contender yet. Have to see better development from Trevor Lawrence. Have to see an offensive line protect him. He got weapons. The biggest signing, I think, for them was Brandon Sheff. Comes over at the offensive line to help him out and help protect Trevor Lawrence. That was great. I still think the offensive line needs help. The defense all over for the Jaguars needs help, definitely. Great thing about the Jaguars' defense is the pass rush. Everywhere else, it's terrible. They did get Darius Williams, who was great on the Rams, but they still need help. Defense can look terrible, sure. But Jaguars, they can surprise some teams. They could. But looking into their schedule are Cowboys, Ravens, Broncos, Colts, Raiders, Chiefs. I think they will surprise some teams, especially going against the AFC West this year. I think they might sneak a win from one from one of those teams and the nfc east overall i just don't seem as contender i really don't so i have the jaguars finishing at third place in the afc south coming in second place of the afc south is tennessee titans at nine and eight they got rid of their second best player aj brown he went to the philadelphia eagles the titans did not want to pay him they didn't have the money to do it this is still a good team despite losing aj brown you have King Henry. Before he went out last year, he was fantastic. And he will do better. I expect him to do a lot better this year. And on the wide receiver end, they got Robert Woods and Traylon Burks. That's good. The biggest question to me is Ryan Tannehill. Is Ryan Tannehill going to save his job this year? That's my question. Because we've seen him gone through this before with the Miami Dolphins when he played for them. He didn't keep his job. Now, with Tennessee, he improved and did a lot better. This is where his job's on the line here because they drafted a QB past draft and Tannehill doesn't do it. I think he's gone. And looking into the Titans' schedule, which is tough, they have Bills, Raiders, Colts, Commanders, Chiefs, Broncos, Packers, Bengals, Eagles, Chargers, Cowboys. So that's going to be very hard for the Titans. Without having A.J. Brown, who was their second best player, that hurts them a bit. I think the Titans take a step down this year because of that. And going on to their defense side which was good their weakness for them was the linebackers making a tackle re-sign harold landry that defense is still good secondary improved a little bit it was questionable previous years but overall this team is going to decline this year i see them as a playoff wildcard contender but i have them finishing in second place the afc south and taking the crown in the afc south is the indianapolis colts at 10 and 7 i have this team has needed a qb for many years Many years. They had Carson Wentz. And we saw that turn out in Jacksonville. This team on both sides of the ball is great. The offensive line, they have Jonathan Taylor, one of the best running backs in the league. Defense, they improved a lot. They have Darius Leonard, their Armstead. They've traded for Matt Ryan. They trade away Carson Wentz. And Matt Ryan, he's all right. He's not elite that he was a couple years ago back in the Super Bowl against Tom Brady when he choked 28-3. to But I think this is the best team in the AFC South because overall, the defense is solid. The offense has the weapons. It just needs the QB. And can Matt Ryan take this team to the playoffs? Because this is what the Colts have needed for years. They haven't had a great QB since Andrew Luck. Where is Andrew Luck anymore? Does anyone know? He might be hiding under a rock. But looking at their schedule, they have 
Chiefs, Titans, Broncos, Jaguars, Commanders, Patriots, Raiders, Eagles, Steelers, Cowboys, Vikings, Chargers, Giants, Texans. This is an easy schedule for the Colts. They need to execute and do not lose to the Jaguars. Don't lose to those clowns. So once again, all the Colts need to do is Matt Ryan, just lead your team down the field and win. That's all for the Colts because they have so much talent on both sides of the ball. But I have the Colts finishing here at first. So just a quick recap of the AC South. I have finishing in fourth, Texans, third, Jaguars, second, Titans, and first is the Colts. Let's move on to the AFC West. Now we get to the AFC West, the last division in my AFC predictions. The best division, I believe, in the NFL. Coming in number four is the Las Vegas Raiders at 9-8. and eight. The Raiders last year, they won in the most dramatic ending I've ever seen in an NFL game. By almost choking the game away and make it go to three seconds left, they lost their head coach early in that season and somehow make the playoffs, which Rich Versace was at the time. Now he's with the Packers. A lot of things happened with the Raiders last year. And somehow they made the playoffs. But that was fantastic to see the Raiders make it. But looking into their offseason and what they did, which was one of the best I saw this season, was trade for Devontae Adams, my favorite receiver, and they trade for him. <sighs> Why? They signed Chandler Jones, one of the best pass rushers in the league, Bring in a new head coach, Josh McDaniels, which the last time he was the head coach was with the Denver Broncos. He was terrible with them. But on the offensive side of the ball, they have great weapons that I just mentioned with Devontae Adams. They got Darren Waller, Hunter Renfro. The biggest problem for me on the offense is the offensive line to help protect Derek Carr and help that run game going because the run game was struggling last year for the Raiders. And Derek Carr a little bit. I need to see him take his game to the next level. I need to see that. Because when you watch Derek Carr, and I talked about this in my top 10 QB video about him. When you watch him, he's just an average guy. He's never too great. He's never too bad. He's even Steven. It wasn't great if it's touchdown interception ratio is what I'm going to say. He needs to do a lot better job of that, which I think he will. But that was a bit of a concern to me when I watched Derek Carr. He needs to take his game to the next level. He's even Steven. The defense side ball needs help. Their pass rush is amazing. When you have Chandler Jones and Max Crosby, fantastic guys. The defense is the big concern to me. The defensive line and the secondary need help all around. And they have a tough schedule. They have Cardinals, which they don't have DeAndre Hopkins. Titans. Don't have A.J. Brown. Chiefs, Texans, Saints, Jaguars, Colts, Broncos, Seahawks, Chargers, Rams, Patriots, Steelers, Niners. This is a tough schedule. When they improve that defensive line in the secondary, especially the secondary, then they're going to do better. But for right now, I need to see that defense improve and Derek Carr take his game to the next level. That's what I need to see. And I have the Raiders finishing at 9-8 at fourth place in this division. In third place, the Denver Broncos at 9-8. The biggest move the Broncos did this offseason was trading for Russell Wilson. As you see here in this trade details, they gave up Drew Locke, Noah Fant, and some draft picks. I think that was a good trade for the Broncos. I think it was. And they bring a new head coach, Nathan Hackett, who is the Packers offensive coordinator. When you go into this offense, they got great running backs, Javante Williams, Melvin Gordon, Jerry Judy, Corlin Sun, Tim Patrick. This is a great offensive weapon for Russell Wilson. He is gifted with toys now. Offensive line is a little bit concerned. It's gotten a lot better. The biggest question to me is Russell Wilson on that offense, but Russell Wilson needs to do his job. He has the weapons, and Russell Wilson just has to do his job for the Broncos offense. That's it. Because Broncos offense is loaded. Nathan Hackett is going to create some great plays for Russell Wilson. I think Russell Wilson is going to have a fantastic season with the Broncos. On the defense side, the pass rush is the biggest concern to me. Yes, they have Bradley Chubb. They brought in Randy Gregory. But Bradley Chubb needs to stay healthy. And can Randy Gregory be solid? That's the question to me. If that pass rush stays healthy and solid, the Broncos defense can do well. And Russell Wilson is going to do great. Going to their schedule, they have one of the toughest schedules this year. They have the Seahawks. Texans, 49ers, Raiders, Colts, Chargers, Jets, Jaguars, Titans, Raiders, Panthers, Ravens, Cardinals, Rams, Chiefs, Chargers. Broncos have a tough stretch going towards the end of the regular season. They go from week 13, they're at Baltimore, they're home against Kansas City, they're home against the Cardinals, at Los Angeles, they go to Chiefs, then they come home for the finale with the Chargers. That's a tough schedule for them. Broncos, I put them here at 9-8 because it's a tough schedule, but I think the Broncos do well this year. And as Russell Wilson mentioned to the Bronco fans, let's ride. That was one of the most cringiest things I ever seen. Broncos country, let's ride. Broncos country, let's ride. In second place of the AFC West is 
the Los Angeles Chargers at 10 and 7. I loved the Chargers offseason. Their defense, it will take a step up because they're getting Derwin James back, JC Jackson. So this defense should be solid for the Chargers. They acquired Khalil Mack. He's washed up. But I think he can be solid. I think he'd be solid for the Chargers. And then the other issue on the defense is the linebackers. They have Kenneth Murray. He was not great at the tackling. He didn't make that many great tackles. Chargers defense has just got to not let up many points as they did last year. Offense side of the ball. They have great weapons. Austin Eckler. You got Mike Williams. Keen Allen. And then your main guy is Justin Herbert. He's great. Now, I know you guys watched my previous video of the top 10 QBs. And you guys saw me say he wasn't clutch. To clarify that for you folks that don't understand what I mean by my clutch is he didn't execute that offense. He had to do a better job. Yes, his defense was terrible. Do a lot better job lean his team and winning those games this year prove me wrong like i love justin herbert use your weapons take your team to the playoffs that's it just execute and play your game justin herbert that's all i'm saying just get the win be better in the red zone because that was a big concern i saw when i watched you the red zone you're at the one yard line and you mess up just get it in there offensive line is going to be solid with zion johnson slater Corey lindsley that's half the offensive line that's going to help you out going to a schedule which is tough they have the raiders jaguars texans browns broncos seahawks falcons 49ers chiefs cardinals dolphins titans colts rams so like the Broncos, the Chargers also have a tough stretch towards the end of the season. And that starts from week 10, I will say, all the way to week 18. You got the 49ers, Chiefs, Cardinals, Raiders, Dolphins, Titans, Colts, Rams, Broncos. Those are going to be the games to help you determine if just Herbert's going to charge to the playoffs or not. I think you guys will be great this year. Just make it to the playoffs, hopefully. Just don't blow a timeout. Taking the crown in the AFC West is the Kansas City Chiefs. At 11 and 6. Now, in their offseason, the Chiefs had the worst offseason compared to their division rivals. They lost Tyreek Hill. However, they did get some new weapons. They drafted Sky Moore. They got Juju Smith Schuster. So, this is the TikTok team with Juju Smith Schuster and Jackson Holmes. That's going to be fun to watch. Looking at their offense, it's still great. They got Clyde at the running back, new wide receivers. I think they'll gel and do well with Patrick Mahomes. Offense line is all right. It's gotten better since he went to the Super Bowl when he got destroyed with that. I think that offense will be solid. The defensive side of the ball, that's where I, I'm concerned about this team. They lost their best defensive player, Honey Badger. He went to the Saints. They still have Frank Clark, Chris Jones, and they drafted George Koloftis, who's pretty good. Nick Bolton. So this pass rush and the defense line is going to be good for the Chiefs. The secondary is my biggest concern when you lost your best defense player, Honey Badger. And looking at the division rivals, they all have great receivers. So the secondary for the Chiefs is going to be a big concern to me. Can they keep up with those wide receivers? That's what's going to turn for the Chiefs is my biggest question. Is the secondary for the defense going to be great? That's my big question. But I do think their offense is going to be bail them out sometimes. Last season, it didn't help to the playoffs. And heading into the Chiefs schedule, they have the Cardinals, Chargers, Colts, Buccaneers, Raiders, Bills, 49ers, Titans, Jaguars, Rams, Bengals, Broncos, Texans, Seahawks. The toughest stretch for me when I'm looking at this Chiefs team is at the beginning of the season from week one to week seven. That's the toughest stretch. I However, I think they're just going to win most of their games here. They take the Cardinals. I think they'll win that. Chargers, they'll split that series. 49ers, I think they'll beat. Raiders, they'll split. Buccaneers, that's me. be Big problem for me. Buffalo Bills is another one. That's going to be their toughest stretch. And then like in week 11, week 12, they have the Rams and Chargers. That's going to be another tough stretch. So overall, the AFC West has a tough schedule. The Chiefs have it in the beginning, while their division rivals have it towards the end of the season. If the Chiefs can take care of their business in the beginning of the season, they should be able to win their division easily. Just take care of business in the beginning, and they're going to win it all. That's what I have to say about the Chiefs. I think they're going to be a great team this year. And once again, I have them finishing at 11-6. and six. So folks, just to recap the AFC West real quick, I have the Raiders in fourth place, Broncos in third, Chargers in second, and the Chiefs taking the AFC West crown. That's all I got for today. I hope you guys enjoyed my new graphics on this video. Comment below your thoughts on the teams and how you think I did my predictions. What are your thoughts, your own predictions? And stay tuned for my NFC prediction and the NFL playoff prediction videos coming out soon. So stay tuned for that. And make sure to leave a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel. Right now, I'm at 168 subscribers. The goal by the end of this summer 
is to get close to 200 subscribers. So we need 32 people out there on the YouTube. Hello? Talking to you, YouTube. We need 32 more people to subscribe to this channel to reach the goal of 200. So tell your family, tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell your pets if they have technology devices. Use the dog's paw to subscribe to the channel. So I would appreciate if you guys could do that for me and help grow this channel a little bit more. And I appreciate you guys watching my videos. Love it. But that's right for the studio. So stay tuned for the NFC prediction video and the NFL playoff prediction video. Enjoy the summer, folks. Okay.